Hey up folks, welcome back to Liberty Junction. Going to do a bit of a karma one this time after that uh, crazy extreme train spot as I think we need to mellow out a bit, don't we? It's not going to do us blood pressure any favours. Anyway, we're talking to Ladderman the other day and he's got uh, a contact in uh, post office and he reckons he can intercept parcels. I don't know if it's legal or not, but uh, he says there's something uh, summit lined up. I don't even know what that means. I mean, I don't want to get in trouble or out like that, but... Uh, he sounds really excited about it, so yeah. Anyway, uh, I'm going to focus on Z21 a little bit in this episode. I touched on it the other day and uh, had a couple of people message and ask uh, if I could uh, show a bit more, so uh, I will do. And like I said on the previous video, I use the old software, I don't use the new one. And there's a reason behind that which I'll explain on this video. Oh, hang on a minute, knock it door. Yep, pal, parcel for liberty. <laughs> We're all a bit crackers, wasn't it? Look at this, I've got a parcel, folks. Liberty Junction, look at uh, proper Yorkshire. Oh, it's made it without even postcode, that's decent. Let's have a look inside. I don't know what we do unboxing videos, but why not, being as though we're live. Let's get this tape off, let's have a look inside. Not even ordered out, so uh, this is a surprise. I wonder if my missus has bought me some. Let's have a quick look inside here. It's a bit of a tatty box, isn't it? Oh, look at this, look, there's a letter, uh, handwritten as well. Dear Iron Horse, Yeehaw! We goddamn loved your American episode. As requested, here's one of our grass kits. Enjoy the crazy mofos at WWS, kiss kiss. Hey, I like that, it's even got American accent. Oh, look at that, static grass kit, I didn't even want one of these. I'll, uh, that's decent, yeah. Nice, I don't know what that's all about. But that's well decent, isn't it? Right, back to the video. Anyway, a bit of a trick. We're not using red buffers today. Uh, I just liked parking him up with his uh, cousin, uh, Red Stripe 37. I think for this episode, we're going to do a bit of shunting and we're going to show the uh, Z21 in action. And I'm going to talk now about why I bought it. I used to run Ormby Select. Uh, it's the only one I ever knew. I didn't really know about any, any other controllers. And I still don't. Uh, I really don't. But... I saw a video with the Z21 and digital point control using these uh, using photographs of people's layouts and I just thought I've got to have that. What I didn't realise when I had all my select is if you want to put an horn on you have to you've got your controller, you press the function button, then you press the number of the horn, then you press the function button again and then you get the horn and it's an absolute crazy cracker's way of doing it. Uh, and you don't realise how bad it is until you get your sense something a bit better, like the Z21, where you can just literally go for every horn it's got on one screen split seconds apart and play little tunes on on and stuff like that so much better just on a game changing level so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just show you exactly how i do the point control for this little section because it's only this section that does it because it's about three and a half hundred quids worth of point motors to do this little uh, shunting area and to complete my layout i need about another 400 quids worth and i just ain't got spare 400 quid at minute and if i did i'd probably buy another cavalax cavalax did it again, I said I would. Anyway, I'm seriously thinking about whether in that Cavalex and leave it buffers red so I can just call it red buffers because I quite like that name now. So yeah, back on subject, I saw that someone had done this uh, point control using a photographic track and uh, it just, for me, it just makes it so easy you can see where your train's going to go. I won't say you don't ever derail them and get them wrong because uh, I do that quite often because I'm uh, half useless and I do too many things at once because sometimes I'm running four trains at a time and still trying to shunt stuff. So it's uh, it gets a little bit air-raising and tricky when you do that. But I saw that photograph stuff and that's what I wanted. And for some reason they've took that option off on new software and that's the only reason I've not upgraded because I like it so much. It makes that little area of mine so easy to... Uh, to get it through it's just uh it's just so good if i just had switches i'd be forever derailing constantly and i'd never know where stuff is and even if i did that lighting system as i've said before i did it before and it lasted about a month before it started going wrong because the seat motors they've got like a little washer that connects the wires up and i don't know what's going on with it but they must be so sensitive if it's a smidgen out of line it just don't work properly so I can't really be bothered. And I know with DCC Concepts ones, you can add wires to them and make a mimic panel. And I know that would work perfectly, but why would you have them 
expensive fancy digital motors and mess about with a mimic panel when you can have it all on a screen that's what i think anyway i just think it's fantastic and uh, i just wish they'd put that feature on the uh, on the new software to be fair i'd uh, i'd write to uh, z21 people but the german and when i did germany at sc uh, german at school we just learnt all rude words instead of real sentences so i kind of uh, i kind of ruined with it with my gcse german so I can't really write to them. But it doesn't matter. At least if I ever go into adult entertainment industry, I know a few words to use. Right, what have I been doing this week? I'll tell you what I've been doing. I've got uh, a couple of them sliding wall vans. I don't know if you've seen them. The, uh, the burgundy ones, EWS. And I don't show them very often because I had to go at graffiti in them in very early days and made them look an absolute disgrace. It, Libby had done a better job. Uh, so I don't really show them. And then I weathered them with some weathering powder and air spray and all sorts. And it, they just looked a little bit garbage. So I've tried cleaning them up a bit and tried cleaning graffiti off. And to be honest, I, would, I was kind of in half-hearted mood because uh, I've had some right household disasters this week. It's like my life this month has turned into chaos. My car's gone crazy. And then uh, water meter on house watches in, in kitchen sinks decided to start spewing water out everywhere. So I've had to have like 24 hour emergency plumber out and it's just been chaos. So I'm uh, trying to take my mind off it, trying to sort them two uh, wagons out and I kind of did a bit of a bodge on them. So what I've done is I've cleaned up most of it and then I've given one side of them a really ridiculously heavy weathering and then I've got the other side a heavy weathering. So uh, I'll see how they look in daylight once I get them back in the ring garage at the minute. They may or may not be ruined, but I consider I'd ruined them back in day, so I don't really care about them. Plus, them sliding wall vans, I really love them uh, grey ones with yellow ends, but the burgundy ones, I just think, I just don't like them. Uh, I just, I don't know, I don't even know why I got them. I do know why I got them. I got them because I got addicted to buying EWS stuff, because I had uh, a couple of them, and then I've got a train of about 20 now. But that's the reason. I finished installing my last piece of fencing that we got from Colwich. Uh, I've put it on, you know, where my multi-storey car park is, there's a road there and there were a bit of a drop-off and I used to have some yellow railings there, industrial ones, to stop people falling to the doom. But I used that yellow railings when I did that uh, Pringles container thing and to be fair, it looked a bit crackers with yellow railings, so I've put a nice piece of fence in it. What last piece and it just fit perfect, so yeah, I'm happy with that. Changing point again, look, little picture in picture. It's good, it's good effort, this. And uh, because I'd left some wagons in that shed, I could only, ju I only had just had enough space by about two millimetres then. No camera tricks, though. This is all one shot, just so you know. So next on my to-do list, I want to finish that uh, mesh security fence that I'm going to run from. You know where that uh, little KD road is near Cafe, near the uh, scrapyard bit? I need to add another section of that get that built and finished and I need to put some barbed wire on top of the other one with that cotton I use because that's a fiddly job I've been avoiding it because it's fiddly as out using uh, cotton and super glue it's just crackers I ruined my fingers last time for about two weeks I was biting super glue bits off my hands for the rest of the week but I'm going to get that done and then I'm going to start painting up this uh, fence and I've had installed I'm going to get that painted up uh, so it's a little bit weathered because it looks a little bit bright and it's a like I say it's a tan colour so it's got almost the colour of brand new wood, but uh, technically is brand new, so technically I shouldn't really weather it because it was only installed this week. But I'm still going to because I don't want it to look like it was only installed this week. And if I'm brutally honest, I don't really know what I'm going to do with that. I'm probably just going to paint it up with some uh, water-based paint, make a bit of uh, a runny wash and see how that looks and try not to ruin it. But I might ruin it because uh, I've not done it before. I've just ordered another pack of uh, them Ormby couplings. I've only ordered one pack. I'm going to see how I get on with that one pack. And then I've ordered one more pack of KDs so I can just do a little bit more uncoupling. Because I don't want them to be not uncouplable, if that makes sense. And while I was doing this video, I basically had my uh, 47 running right up a track, pulling them uh, 90 ton wagons and sliding door vans. Which on the couplings on and I know I said on the last video that I've not had any come off yet but one came off I, I looked at it 
and it came off where it was glued and when I've looked the glue off I kind of half-hearted glued that one it doesn't look like I've got any glue on it so the basically the, I think the glue's it just needed a bit of a better glue job so I'm just gonna I've basically just shoved it back in and it's held but what I'll do is I'll make sure when I glue them next time with PVA, I, I glue the full piece and then shove it in. Because I only I basically just put a dab underneath, so I ain't glued them properly. And they're holding up well. And like I say, them uh, my other couplings had pull apart left, right and centre anyway. So they've done really well, because it must have done 200 loops easily before that's happened. So I'm still well happy with them. Just wished a bit longer. So 97's uh, picked up all wagons and took them round ready for... Uh, class 08 to come and get them and then class 08 is going to get them and take them round to, to the yard why have we swapped trains we've swapped trains because Colin needs to do a job at 97 and uh, he could only spare it for 5 minutes uh, also it makes the video a little bit more interesting doesn't it and talking about interesting videos I'm not going to be able to show Viaduct at the minute because uh, for the time being that's uh, it's been all taped off it's a bit of a scene I think they won't let us near it, they won't let us film it, and there's tents and all sorts going on. I've had health and safety proper breathing down my neck this week, and I could do without it, to be fair. All I want to do is run the little uh, railway business, uh, hassle-free, and I get these idiots coming along. And albeit, I caused that, because I asked them to come uh, to get rid of that other cameraman, just to really point get a point-scoring thing going on with him, and I, I thought I was winning him. But I don't need this now, do I? So anyway, we're not going near Viaduct in this episode. I've got to say, last time we uploaded a crazy one, basically, I had subscribers dropping off left, right and centre, and all I can say is they just must have been... They weren't right for us anyway, were they? Jumping ship like that. So uh, this one, I've gained. I've done no but gained. Not a single person's left because of that, so craziness has prevailed. I knew it wouldn't end once I got your head around it. I've also had a bit of a crazy switch round, as you can see. I've put my uh, four-car EMU now at back at Quarry, so no longer is Digger loading uh, rocks into Wagon. This Quarry uh, quarry boss is going mad because I've pay basically parked a passenger train in his quarry. But I was sick at sight of it round the other side. It was doing me head in there all the time, so I needed to move it. That's decent. At Twin, isn't it? He's opened uh, gate wide so that we can have a nice little view of them flats. The, uh, I do like them. I've got my hands some more. They're finishing about five hours, but I think they're going to go for silly money. And I don't get paid till next week. I looked on the Curoscale website and they've only got the uh, red container ones left. If they'd have had some of them mixed ones with different sizes, I quite like the look of them. Or even any others, yellow ones, white ones. I'd have, I'd have probably bought some once I got paid, but because uh, you get 10% off if you buy two packs, don't you, or more? So I'd have probably bought a couple of packs, but I'm not just having all red. So that's too red, isn't it? I've already got this rate long train of burgundy, which uh, is just powering away as we speak. Look at that, he's really going for it, mad speed. That's why I've left it on so long. So my Extreme Train Spotter episode, I'm going to score that a 9 out of 10 on crazy scale, I would say. Uh, oh, hang on a minute, he's just going to uh, uncouple. This is always nerve-wracking, this, and I tell you now, it took two takes, because first take, it didn't uncouple. I've never had that, but yeah, at least I'm uh, telling the truth. These KDs are good, but uh, sometimes you've got to get them right. So I've gone past it this time before I tried stopping on it. And I think I think this is the answer: is you like roll backwards of at magnet roadie bit, and then you just get that little bit more just to release it, and then go forward, and then it's perfect. But first time I tried doing it without reversing, like an idiot. Anyway, I think my next episode is going to be, uh, you know, like the film Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Well, I think it's going to be uh, Honey, the police dogs escaped and gone mad crackers. And I think that's going to be a full 10 out of 10 crazy. I've got some uh, decent ideas for that. It's going uh, to need a couple of quids worth of uh, funding spending on it for my special effects. Because I'm going to get some uh, proper Hollywood special effects for that. Anyway, it's Z21 time, folks. So I'll talk about that later. If you're not bothered about watching this bit, I'll see you next time, folks. Cheers. If you are, let's crack on. Basically, you get two sides of a screen. So if you imagine splitting screen in half down middle, and I've got 10 trains, so it fits perfect. And you can load them as quick as that. You just press buttons and they load up. 
functions you've got two pages of functions on newer one you get three pages you can get a lot more functions but i'll just pick my favorites there's a few a few missing but generally it's all right some of the functions on some of the trains i don't give monkeys about if i'm honest so you flip it with that side button there look and then you get this and this is what i love so this is a screenshot of all my digital points on that side at layout so at any point while the train's running, I can flip the page onto this and just move stuff about as I need to. Or I can have one train running on one side of the screen and this on the other side of the screen, so I've always got it on. And that's generally how I run it. I will generally have this on, unless I'm not using that area, of course. And as you can see, certain ones, when you press them, it'll do two points at the same time. So the one on the bottom right, that they're connected together so that you can't really derail uh, doing that. You can't get it wrong by doing one and not the other, because there'd be no point doing one and not the other. So we'll split it back into two parts, and then uh, there it is, and that's how I generally run it. So you've got your basic speed control here, where you move it up and down. And then, uh, as you just saw, you can swipe, that, that half of the page you can swipe in, it'll move from one train to the next. And I've also got this, it's the uh, the wireless mouse, I think it's called. And it's basically just an handheld controller, so it's got a turning wheel. It's got loads of buttons, it's got loads of functions. I've not read instructions for it. It's really complicated, but I only use it for basics. So middle top buttons to stop trains in an emergency. Left and right of that, that flicks through trains from 1 to 10 that I've got 10. Big knobs to do things and buttons that functions. And that's basically all I use it for. I don't do points or anything with that because it'd be crackers to do that. It's really good, but it eats batteries like I eat hot dinners. And I never really used it until I started filming, because when I'm filming, I'd much rather use that and hold that in my hand and control trains with that that are on shot, because I can slow them down while I'm holding camera, if that makes sense. So with what I've got on screen, you can basically control three trains at once now using this, but also I can control then with my iPhone another two at the same time, so you can do five at once, it's absolutely crackers. So I'll give you a real whistle-stop tour of how you can uh, add your own little point photograph section. You go into this track control settings and you just choose a photo. I've took a photo with iPad. I normally take them with iPhone because this is such an old iPad. It does a terrible job of photographs. But basically, you put your photo on screen and then you drag whatever point you want and it's got them all to where you want it. And you can adjust its size and its angles and whatnot until it fits on your photo. And it's as good as that. And then all you do is put what digital address it is, and then it's done. And it's as simple as that, and it's superb. The only thing is, it only works with, unless you use accessory decoders or Cobalt Digital DTC Concepts, which is what I use. So they are really good, really, really good. Really, really, really good. So all I'm doing there is just giving it a random address of 100 and something, and then I'm just going to delete that afterwards because it's only to show you. But then you go back into your thing, and then you can swipe there, look, and now you've got that on. So then to change them points, it's as easy as that. So I'd have to buy for that because it's a double slip and a single point. I'd need three digital point controllers to do that little section, which is basically the best part of 100 quid, isn't it? For me, so expensive but so good, so it's kind of worth it. So I'm now flying through it like an absolute madman because I've not got long left. So basically this next screen, you've got program controlling for all your CV values. You can read them and write them. You can read loco addresses as well. If you get a loco, you don't know what address it is. Just put it on your track and read it and it'll tell you. Write a new address, it's as easy as that. You can also program it on your main track. I don't know why you'd do that unless you took all the other trains off. That seems crackers. And then the bottom left, I ain't got a Scooby what that is because I haven't read instructions and I don't really care what it is because I don't use it. But it might be something super awesome but I don't know. Anyway, I've got to go now, folks, because it's starting to set on fire. Uh, so let's get out of here. I hope that were a bit of a whistle-stop tour. I just wanted to get a few bits and bobs in to show you what it's all about. There's a new version of that software, which will be a lot better, but it ain't got the photograph thing, which to me is the only thing I wanted it for. Super awesome. See you later.